Akbar, the Conch Telegraph. Lots of folks go to bed hungry these days. I've heard of men fighting over scraps and garbage cans, and about that lady who taught her kids to steal milk. Because Mama works in rich folks' homes, we've had a better than most. But after looking at what Aunt Minnie sets in front of me for breakfast, I start thinking that going hungry might not be that bad after all. I stare at my plate. There's a piece of thick toast with something green and slimy smeared on top of it. What is it? I ask. Alligator pear on Cuban bread, Aunt Minnie purses her lips. I don't cater to fussy children. I pick it up and take a bite. It tastes a lot better than it looks. I read the letter from your mother. She says she's planning on marrying Miss Archie fella. Aunt Minnie raises an eyebrow. You planning on marrying her? I don't know. What's he do? Aunt Minnie asks. He's a salesman, I say. Is he nice? Is he good to her? He bought me these shoes. Aunt Minnie crosses her arms. I spent my whole childhood taking care of Sadie Bell, and here I am taking care of you now. I sure hope you have more sense than her. I'm not sure how I feel about her saying Mama doesn't have sense, so I change the subject. May I have a glass of milk, please? I ask, and she says, help yourself. I just... I get down a glass I get a glass down off a shelf and open the ice box. A scary insect like creature with a pointy tail scuttles out, waving mean little claws, and I jump back. Termite starts barking but keeps his distance. Scorpion Ma Bean says. Aunt Minnie picks up a rolling picks up a rolling pin from the counter and brings it down hard on the scorpion. Kermit looks at me. They like to hide in dark places. Like shoes, Aunt Minnie says pointedly, staring at my feet. I know, I say, Mama, Mama warned me to shake them out before I put them on. She must remember the time she didn't shake hers out, Aunt Minnie says. She takes a dustpan and sweeps up the dead scorpion and then walks out of the room. What's an alligator pear anyhow, I ask. Are all kids from New Jersey as dumb as you, Bean asks? Beans asks. That's an alligator pear. Kermit says, pointing to a bowl of avocados. That's an avocado, I say. One of the rich ladies we worked for liked them in her salad. What does this Archie sell anyway, Beans asks. Encyclopedias, I say. Encyclopedias? To who? Dumb kids like you who don't know what an avocado is, I say. The front door slams open and Porkchop comes walking down the hall into the kitchen. Ready, pal? Porkchop asks. Ready, Beans replies. Smoothing back his hair and slapping his cap on, Kermit stands up. Can I come, Buddy asks. Of course you can't come, Buddy, says Beans. Aunt Minnie walks back into the kitchen and groans at the overflowing basket of clothes in the corner. Take Buddy with you, turtle, turtle too. I don't want children underfoot. I need to finish all this laundry today or Mrs. Cardillo won't pay me. Beans frowns. Hot dog, Buddy says. Outside, the heat hits me like a slap in the face. Kermit disappears around the side of the house and returns a moment later with a load of old quilts and then piles them in the wagon. We start walking down the sleepy lane. Kermit pulls the wagon and Buddy dawdles, stopping every few minutes to pick up stones. Where are we going, I ask. We got pudding today, Kermit says. We stop by a small house that has a tree with blooming red flowers in front of it. The sound of a baby crying rings out an open window. Beans knocks on the door, it opens, and I see the source of the racket, a bald, fat, red-faced baby being held by his tired mother. Morning, Mrs. Lowe, Beans says. Oh, Beans, the woman says, I don't think I've ever been so happy to see someone. How's he doing, Beans asks. I swear he didn't sleep more than five minutes last night. He's teething real bad. Don't worry, Mrs. Lowe, we'll take care of him, Beans says. I just fed him, she says, and then practically tosses the crying baby into Beans' hands. She gives Porkchop a small stack of cloth diapers and goes back inside. Beans sticks the baby in the wagon on top of the quilts and we start moving again. The baby's crying his head off like he's being tortured. What's wrong with him, I ask? Nothing, Beans says. Pudding's the worst baby we've ever had. It's his mother's fault, Porkchop explains. She spoils him, picks him up every time he cries. You've got to let a baby be, Kermit says. That's why we don't let girls in the gang, Bean says. Girls always want to pick up the baby. Girls always want to pick up babies. Not me, I say. I don't like babies. They're like Shirley Temple. Everyone thinks they're cute, but the fact is they're annoying. 
All they do is cry and make messy diapers. Pudding is crying furiously, kicking his little feet. Time to wrap them up, fellas, Beans announces with authority. If the diaper gang were an army, then Beans would be the general and Porkchop his lieutenant, which means all the grunt work is left for poor Kermit. Blanket, Porkchop orders, and Kermit lays a thin blanket on the ground. Baby, he says, and Kermit hands him pudding. Porkchop proceeds to roll the baby up like a little sausage. He tucks the blanket tied around and muffling his cries. We've barely walked a few steps when the baby abruptly stops crying, screwing his eyes shut against the sun. He's fast asleep. Works every time, Bean says in a satisfied voice. Can he breathe, I ask. Ain't lost the baby yet. Why is he called Pudding? Mrs. Lowe thought she was getting fat from eating too much banana pudding, but it turned out it was a baby, Kermit explains. A white-haired old man comes running down the street. He looks around and then darts down an alleyway. A moment later, a lady comes walking toward us fast. She's got a streak of flour on her cheek as if she was baking and got interrupted. He went that way, Mrs. Alvarez, Bean says, pointing. Thank you, Bean, she says in a weary voice. Second time this morning it's happened. She smiles at me. You must be turtle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, I say, and she walks quickly off. Kermit taps his skull. Old Mr. Alvarez ain't right in the head anymore. Poor Mrs. Alvarez spends her life chasing after him. One time he ran naked down Duval Street, but he explains you should have seen it. I don't think I would have wanted to see that, I say. An ice man is making his deliveries, and Beans calls out, You got any spare chips, Mr. Roberts? Sure thing, Beans, the man says, handing out slivers of ice. Don't forget me, buddy, at, buddy says. Wouldn't dream of it, buddy, Mr. Roberts says, giving the little boy a chip, and one to me, too. You must be turtle. My, I do believe you're as pretty as your mother. I suck on the ice until all that's left is a cold memory. How come everyone knows who I am, I ask. Conk Telegraph, Porkchop says. What? Conks like to talk. Everyone knew you were here five minutes after you showed up yesterday, Kermit says. Besides, you're related to most of them. Mama told me that conks are what folks in Key West call themselves. A lot of them originally came from the Bahamas, where they fished for conk. When I asked Mama about my conch relative, she said her parents had been dead for a long time, but that I had a lot of conch cousins. Too bad she didn't tell me that they were all snotty boys. Beans leads us to the waterfront. It's a hive of activity, bustling with boats. There's a fella selling live flapping fish right on the dock, and another one who's unloading some scary-looking cargo did sharks. But he climbs on a railing and stares down at the water. I sure do love watching them, he says, and I look too. The biggest turtle imaginable breaks the surface of the water like a lazy cow. Another pops up and then another. There's a whole crowd of them. What are they all doing there, I ask. It's the turtle crawls. It's the turtle crawls, Kermit says. Is It's where they keep the sea turtles until they're butchered. Don't fall over, Porkchop says to me, snapping his teeth. <sighs> You'll end up with supper. Hi, Slowpoke, Beans calls out to a man working on the deck of a boat. The man turns. He's tan with sunburned patches around his neck and hair the color of caramel. He's wearing a wide straw hat. Hey there, Beans, he says. I stopped in at Maticum and saw your dad. He said to say hi. Thanks, Beans says. I hear you lost your first mate. Why don't you hire me? You know what a good sailor I am. I know, Slowpoke says, but I already hired Ollie. I'll be sure to keep you in mind for next time. The man's cool gray eyes flick over to me and go still. Who's your friend here? That's Turtle. She's a cousin, Buddy says, and she's got a cat named Smokey. Turtle, huh? He says, studying me. You wouldn't have to you wouldn't happen to be related to Sadie Bell Gifford, would you? That's my mama, I say. Really, Slowpoke says, is she here with you? She's in New Jersey. I see, he says. Say, Slowpoke, you get any loggerheads? Beans asks. Not this time, he says, but I did all right. He waves his thumb at the deck of the boat. It's piled high with black blobs. What? What are those? I ask. That's gold you're looking at, Slowpoke says. They're sponges, Kermit says. Sure don't look like any sponges, any sponge I've ever seen, I say. Gotta clean them yet. Then they'll be fine enough for a lady's face, Slowpoke says. Pudding fusses in the wagon and Beans, beans frowns. We gotta keep moving, Slowpoke, or Pudding will wake up. He's teething bad. 
Slowpoke looks at the baby. You should try a little whiskey on his gums. We did once, Bean says. Didn't work. Slowpoke winks. Then you didn't give him enough.